I used to download the shipping labels, get them packed, you know, with my own hands using cello tape and all of that. And calling the delivery guy, look, your your parcels are ready. Why don't you come and pick it up? And he wouldn't. So I used to go on my Activa and deliver them. I think first of all, venture debt should not take technology risk. So it should come in a company which has. figured out product market fit uh, so that's why you do not see venture debt in crypto or nft not too much in gaming because those are uh, areas where venture debt cannot take risk right because the inherent thing is that the money has to come back Looking at how sneakers are selling at such high prices I was intrigued to understand and dig deeper into this particular market of sneakers uh, so today I have with me Vedant Lamba founder of Main Street Marketplace to uh, to take us to a ride on the sneaker market in India I have also taken a lot of questions from my Instagram following and I'll be covering most of them in this conversation Welcome to the show Vedant how Hi, are you sir. doing thank you for having me I'm really excited to be here So before we jump on to the industry uh, on talking about industry I want to know about your journey how did like what made you start something in streetwear culture uh, you know I see wasn't really much into fashion growing up I uh, had a very deep passion for business though and when I learned about sneaker culture overall it just seemed like a great opportunity so it was not so much of let's build in street fashion or anything like that but i learned of sneakers like well, there isn't much here that seems to be a gap and that's an opportunity so we built in that got it i understood so so simple economics tells me that if you control the supply of a product and you create a demand around it to whatever means you can sell that product at a very high prices and that's how sneaker culture like sneaker market is working and i think jordans uh, revolutionized the sneaker culture i think there's a story when uh, nike signed the deal with uh, michael jordan of air jordans in 1984 so they were expecting around uh, uh, selling of around close to 3 million dollars of jordans for next 4 years and they for the first year itself they sold around 126 million dollars of air jordans in that and now nike's 2021 sales if we see uh, total sales is around 40 billion dollars around 3 lakh crores and out of that 4.7 billion is contributed through air jordans so that's how big that air jordans brand is for them so before starting about the industry i want to understand some sneaker terms uh, can, like i've heard about what is ds in this ds stands for dead stock In mainstream fashion, dead stock is a term given to product which hasn't sold, so it's dead stock, uh, and it's not a great, uh, it's not it's not used in like good connotation so much. In the sneaker world, it's the highest form of quality. It refers to an item which has not been even tried on, so it's supposed to be completely brand new, untouched, mint condition, okay. dead stock. So people like to buy that also. People only want dead stock in sneaker world. So when you okay. buy a shoe which released in say 2015. You want to make sure that it's not been worn by anyone, okay. right? So it's dead stock condition. So in the sneaker world, it's like hmm. in fashion, <laughs> it's fashion. It's horrible, but in the sneaker world, it is the most prestige. People will only buy a shoe if it's dead stock. They don't want to. It's either dead stock or it's used. Okay. It's either or. What is OG? OG is original. Original. Okay. So like, it, traditionally, OG is used to refer to someone as an original, original gangster. gangster. um and sneakers is just a shoe that's not a replica it's original or it's the first version that came out for example if like a jordan 1 in the bread colorway came out in 1985 so that would be the og and then came out again in 1991 and then okay so on and so forth so it's like what well, is the og version of this shoe sneaker it's someone who indulges in the purchase and collecting of sneakers in a resale market and what is raffles a uh, raffle is like a lucky draw it's a system that's often used in the world of shoes to um a lot limited supply to consumers so if a brand like adidas wants to release only 1000 of a specific well, let's say the dior jordans for example right i believe there was total supply of about 12000 pairs so on their website they opened up a raffle entry where you could go and enter your name saying i want to buy this shoe it's an intent yeah um and they'll draw out a random 12000 total of 5 million people applied out of which 12000 managed to get the shoe for retail at a retail price and the then they can price. come and sell at whatever price or prices. wear it you know the yeah, idea where and we said okay. you can wear it and then you know on top of that as you could sell it as well to us and then you know we sell it ahead and so any other uh, terms you think are important in this what are sneaker terms that are important um uh I mean, you know, expensive. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty common sneaker term. Uh, what is this? You know? No, that's not an important term. 
not important. I mean, reps are replicas. You want to ah. stay away from reps. Another term in reps is also UA, stands for unauthorized authentic. Unauthorized authentic. What fake. Is it? It's fake. Fake. Only, yeah. It's like good quality fake, but it's fake. <laughs> um, so. Or kya hota hai? Or uh, yeah, I think yeah, this would be good WTB enough. everyone uses in sneaker trade want to buy and WTS is want to sell WTT is want to trade okay and things like that okay so uh, how is the sneaker culture globally and how do you see it evolving in India and like I just want to understand why are people ready to pay lakhs for a pair of shoe like everybody had this question is it like to look cool that I have an expensive product or something like that? how does it work like culture it's a product of status right uh, people don't just want uh, everyone who has money can buy the same things this goes one step further these things that not everyone has money can buy right because they're rare yeah. um, so it's more of like community it's identifying with a certain set of like people who have a certain kind of status it's like oh I also have the same thing you know things like oh, Ranbir Kapoor wears a shoe I also wear the same shoe it's no, that sort of situation you know Kanye West wears a shoe I want to wear the same shoe he made the shoe it's like a status thing purely that's the only reason and, um, you know, historically, humans actually do play this game across different spaces. Right. Everybody plays this game in one way or another. You, know, yeah. you buy, uh, you know, in the simplest terms, you'll buy Bissari water instead of Aquafine, although it's the same price maybe. You're buying Bissari because someone else said you want to, you have to buy Bissari. Or, you yeah. know, uh, in India, it's more common to be buying houses. Hmm. Buy a house, the status thing. Right? You're not really, why would you pay so much money when you could just, you know, rent a house? <laughs> why, why, why do you do it? Why? Right. Uh, it's because you just want the, you know, the status quo of owning a house or the peace of it, the security of it, or then you buy it in a certain area because that area is known to be good. Right. Um, some people do it with cars, some people do it with watches, some people do it with shoes, some people do it with glasses, some people do it with clothes, it changes for everyone. Man. Right. And how do you see it evolving in India? How, like, in, you've been there in the last four years. How are you seeing that's evolving? India is entire, like, this street industry is in a very clear uptick. So everybody who participates in it now in any capacity will see growth. The industry is just growing. Growing, yeah. Um, from institution sides, there's very strong like investment. Uh, you know, brands are growing supply in India very rapidly over the last two, three years. It's grown exponentially. Um, and there's a good space right now when it comes to sneakers. You know, five years ago, nothing. Nobody understood. Nothing. Screw understand, there's nothing there. Yeah. You know, even if you did understand, if you were desperate, you had no access. Today, there's so much, you know, there's thousands of kids like selling. As a consumer, it's a very good place to be, you know. Market's better than anywhere else in the world. You get the best prices. No, okay. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> so, how does this first hand sneaker market work? Like when Nike or Yeezy uh, launches their. That's a product? retail release. Okay. Works via raffles for the most part, okay. or first come, first serve. Okay. And so, it's a limited supply or how do like when do they launch like it's a period like so e each brand has its own launch calendar every few days it's a new release okay you know some things are really hyped some they're not so hyped but in this space a lot of things just keep selling out and sell for minor premiums okay. some things sell for 20 percent 30 percent premium some sell for 30 thousand percent you know it changes and i don't think the, can we access the first time market like it's online of course or it's very democratic. Okay. I mean, of course, there are people who use bots to even increase yeah. their chances. Because I've always but heard. At the end of the day, you still have your shot. You know, you go try okay. luck on the Nike website. You fill a raffle on, you know, veg non veg or whatever. There's plenty of chances. God. It's not hard. And then reselling market is a much bigger market. Uh, it's a and it's, I've seen like it's a full time business for people and some you also do investments like you buy a stuff and sell it. Right? How does that work? And even you are in that market. I don't think it's a bigger market. It'll always be a subset. Um, it's a faster moving market. Correct. It's a free market. There's a lot more players involved. You know, in the retail market, for the most part, it's like brand and consumer. And a lot of these consumers play this new game. So it's like a subset. subset. Um, that being said, it's fairly simple, right? There's a certain number of people will just buy and sell regularly. We actually have a video on our YouTube channel called... Um, uh, the sneaker resale ecosystem in India and breaks yeah. down the several players in a little more detail um, what the different like interacting parties in this space are why they participate how they participate in the investment sense it's like people will just buy and sell shoes regularly right? some people only buy the retail prices and they'll only you know try their luck, luck I don't know 10-15 times a month they get lucky one in three times good for them right? that money doubles or goes up 40-50% it's great hmm. Um, on the flip side, 
uh, there are then people who buy in the resale market itself because they know certain items will go up in price. Like you play stocks and they'll buy 100, 200, 300 pairs. They just have heavy inventory and it goes up. And a lot of these people come and they drop off their shoes at our store and they consign them with us. When they sell, they take the money and we keep a commission. That's how it works for us. We're a consignment store. So, in your, so for Main Street, uh, people will come and sell. Uh, like they can give you the shoes and you will have help them sell and you will charge commissions for that. Precisely. And on average, how much is the re like to retail to what you sell? What is the like? How much is the average sell? on the numbers very unfair. Right. So it, Got it. Um, it changes dramatically item to item. You know, so like I said, some items are ten percent up, twenty percent up. Sometimes go down. Okay. Very rarely, as in it wouldn't be in our space. It wouldn't have sold out. You know, if yeah. it's going down. Got it. So it's not selling out. It rarely comes to us. Uh, once it's sold out, then it's at least like 10, 20, 30 percent up because multiple players want to make their margin, right? Yeah. And then there's of course like market forces that we have to be mindful of and see how much supply and demand there really is. Uh, but some items do go like all the way up, you know. Okay. Got it. So one of the main questions which comes up uh, when you're buying a product like this, uh, what chances of counterfeit are very high. How do you ensure when you're buying a particular sneaker from wherever you're buying, how to ensure whether it's a legit product or not? You check it. Everybody How? should do their due diligence. There are several guides available on the internet. You know, there's minor things where the laces are, what the stitching is like, what this logo is like, what this size tag is, what the box is supposed to be, or the butter paper inside the box. There's several things you can check on a shoe. Uh, you know, you can increase your chance of getting a legitimate item by buying from a trustworthy source. Um, trustworthy might be something that someone you trust places their trust in, for example, that's a good place to start. You know, you have a friend who trusts the seller. Yeah. Might be a good place to increase your chances. That being said, you must always check to make sure if you really want to know. Um, and then there are, you know, there are larger institutions, there are stores like us where you can buy and, you know, um, the idea there is, okay, just in case you do get a count for buy. So suppose it happens, you should always come back and you know, we help you. Got it. Also, I've I've seen one video of yours uh, on uh, YouTube when you made Tanmay Bhatt wear uh, fake sneakers and he was in the party and then you inform him later. Even like I think he would not know about it. Now he would be knowing. Yeah, no, he knew. He knew. He knew. He Afterwards, knew. after we told him, uh, <laughs> the idea was just to show that um, people are too trusting, no? Uh, and you should always. I'm like it's oh, if Tanmay is wearing, then no one else is also questioning. Like, yeah. It must be legit. It must be legit. Uh, <laughs> So it's just idea, everyone, you should always check, you never know who's wearing fakes, even yeah. like someone like him could be. <laughs> so how, how are you seeing growth of independent stores like Veg non Veg, Super Cakes, even your stores? Uh, are they helping grow the sneaker culture in India? Of course, I mean, Veg non Veg, Super Cakes, they interact directly with the brand, so they show direct demand. Yeah. And they'll be like, look, we released yeah. thousands of these items and we had 50,000 people sign up for the raffle. So they're displaying that demand directly to brands, accordingly brands are making more investment in this country. Um, for us being an independent platform, we've seen a ridiculous growth over the last three years. You know, we had 1000% growth, wow. 2020, 2021, 21 to 22, we're seeing um, double on the 100%. And now we're activating some tech. Now we realize that we reached an operational like bandwidth limit. Mm -hmm. Now we're activating technological features to simplify operations for us and increase that bandwidth and see another like four to 500% growth over next year. Wow. And volumes are like, Super strong. You know, there's thousands of kids selling right now. The market's insane. It's, it's a beautiful place to What's be. What's the age group of like people buying? Is this like youngsters are Extremely buying? Extremely diverse. Extremely diverse. Everything from 14, 15, all the way up to you know late 50s. Wow. And I'm not talking like one-off purchasers and regular like, collectors wow. and like regular customers of ours. So, what is the craziest deal you have, you have seen in the market, or you have, you must have sold? So we sold a Dior Jordan for about 12 lakh rupees. And uh, who, who purchased it? It's actually really funny, right? So the Dior Jordan, like I said, 12,000 released worldwide. Uh, India, Dior didn't get a lot of shoes. Uh, but in India, a lot of people managed to get them from abroad. Yeah. And we overall sold more than Dior India did. And they ranged from 4 to 12 lakh rupees. And we sold a lot of pairs, like a hell of a lot of pairs. Wow. They're extremely like iconic shoes. Everybody wanted one. And suddenly, everybody was ready to make that investment because it was fresh. Plus limited supply again. But do you think newer brands can enter this industry or incumbents will only become bigger? No, no, there's definitely space for newer brands to enter. It'll be much harder to do. Uh, it's probably easier in different like categories and apparel and so on. But with sneakers, it's yeah, you're right, it's definitely hard. But it's not impossible. Yeah. You know, there's a great way to enter this is usually to build up um, an independent consumer base and work on collaborations and things like that. Yeah. Or, you know, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's definitely not that easy. Just in the resale space, but just in the sneaker world, it's very possible. Correct. Got it. 
Okay, let, let's. So, sh can you show some sneak peek of cool sneakers you have on the show? Huh. I okay, think they're behind you. <laughs> I'll just pass it on and we can talk about this it. This seems to be a Jordan 1. Oh, this is a Jordan 1 Royal Show. Very popular shoe, very, very, very popular shoe. When this came out, this was trading for 20, 25,000 rupees. Today it's in the mid 30s, almost 40,000 rupees, if I'm not mistaken. It's actually a very similar shoe. And we used to pull this prank in the store early on. It's a very similar shoe. And you put them up, and you wouldn't guess which is which. Uh, but one sells for like 5 lakh rupees, and one's like 35 grand. <laughs> it's really funny. Comes in the same box and everything, too. It's just a lot more rare. Wow. Okay, this is again. The it's also one. a Jordan 1. Jordan 1, okay. This is the Electro Orange Jordan 1. This came in a little higher supply, so I think this sells for 20, 25,000 rupees now, something like that. Very clean shoe, very nice. So, DR, DS or? These are all DS. DS, okay. You can tell, right? They're completely unworn. Okay, this is Yeezy. That is a Yeezy. Uh, it's actually not meant to come out. Uh, these are Easy Boost 350s in the beluga colorway and they're reflective actually. Wow, you shine a light on them, you say they're reflective. This, this re release. So, nothing that happens in the supply demand game, right? So, this shoe was for the longest time uh, 90,000 a lakh, lakh 20, and then re released in a much larger quantity. Okay. Then Volume then. of sales shot up and price came down to like 45, 50,000 rupees. Okay, this is for 45 something. Now it's down to 45 grand. So, you know, this is actually one of my favorite shoes. I was very happy that it came out again. It's a beautiful, beautiful shoe. I started like, when I first like got into sneakers and learned about them, I was like, this is my favorite shoe of all time. Okay, so one last piece. Oh, these are? Uh, these are also Jordan 1 highs. I am not sure what the colorway is called, man. I'm actually, uh, over the last few months, you know, luckily we've got a very nice team here and <laughs> I've managed to transition out of like the day to day work with shoes. So I'm not very, very well versed in the sneaker <laughs> market myself. I uh, tend to keep myself more occupied with the larger scale aspect of things in the business. But it's also a pair of Jordan 1s. Wow. Uh, I, I believe it's slightly more common, will be significantly cheaper. It comes in a different white and red box. Heritage Jordan 1. Heritage That's all it is. Okay, so now we'll move to our lightning round. Uh, I'll ask you questions, you just have to answer in a fast way. That's it. So, most expensive pair of sneakers from your collection? My collection? I don't own any sneakers. You don't own any? Yeah, I wear these shoes every day, 3,000 rupees. <laughs> and you're selling some thousand worth of shoes. <laughs> Yeah. Any any of your friends like whom you have sold uh, the expensive? Oh yeah, I do like 30, 40 lakh rupees shoes, man. <laughs> friend of ours has an Air Mag, it's 35 lakhs. Wow. Uh, what according to you, who has the best sneaker collection in India or outside? Uh, I don't know about best, but pretty much the widest sneaker collection is uh, Harshvardhan Kapoor. Okay, I think I've seen the video again. We have wow. a cool video with him I'll on our channel. Thing. It's ridiculous, he has a whole room with... A so, he shoes. trades or he just keeps for collection? He's a collector. Collection. Okay, got it. And who do you look up into in this industry? This industry? I'm yeah. a big fan of Anand Ahuja's man. He's a really cool person overall. I love Anand. the way he runs his business. Him and his partner Abhineet, they're both incredible businessmen. They have great ethics. They're uh, real like mentors to me as well. I've had the privilege of spending some good time with them and learning from them up front. And just seeing the understanding of brand, of narrative, of stories, of uh, you know the ethics of running a business, the patience, it's beautiful. And so because it's a startup talk show, uh, a startup whose product or service you're using every day in Bombay? I don't know man, so many, Swiggy, Zepto. I think it's a common Red. answer from Zepto, Swiggy is the common answer. Red, uh, a lot. <laughs> okay, <Lincoln>. last, <laughs> sorry? LinkedIn, Instagram, <laughs> WhatsApp. Yeah, of course, you'll have to use all those to market. Uh, last question, but uh, what is success for you? What is success for me? Uh, freedom. Just Free freedom, impact. Freedom and impact. Great. Uh, great. Thank you. Thank you, Vedant, for coming on this show. It was great talking to you and a lot of information flowing in this uh, conversation. I think it will be beneficial for everyone watching this show. So, thank you. I don't know about beneficial, but I thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed it, man. Thank you for having me on thank the show. Thank you. See you around.